We will read responsibly from the psalm found in your bulletin. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name, for you never forsake them. 
Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gate of death. The ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug, and in the snare they set is their own foot caught. The Lord is the one who has his past and justice. The wicked are trapped in birds to their own hands. The wicked shall be given over to the grave, and also all the peoples that forget God. The shall not be the crown, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. But fear not, O Lord, let the ungodly know the In our epistle reading, Paul commends his own ministry and that of his co-workers to the Christians in Corinth. The Corinthians have been treating the missionaries with less respect than Paul believes they deserve, and he rebukes them for their lack of affection. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians to the Christians in Corinth. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the hand, for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying and see. We are alive as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Amen.
Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in a boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swung. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Please be seated. <laughs> Keep forgetting what I'm supposed to do with people. <laughs> it's confusing. I need to take this off the feet. Now, normally, this is our family service. So, hello, everybody. And normally, we'd have all of our young people come sit, but we're not going to do that today. So, just pay attention from your seats. So this is kind of a silly question for Port Washington, but who's ever been on a boat? <laughs> okay, right? If you look up at the ceiling, that's a boat bottom. Churches are designed to have hulls for roofs. If you didn't know that, now you do. So every church you go in will probably look like the hull of a boat, right? It's just kind of symbolic. We're all in the same boat. <laughs> I think it's a hull, right? I'm not, I'm not a big boater. So have any of you ever been in a big storm on a boat? That's another question. <laughs> Pretty scary, right? I imagine. Um, so in the story today of the disciples and Jesus get in this boat to go across to the other side. So Jesus was in his hometown and he was talking to people he knew and now he's going to go across to the foreign land where the Gentiles are. And that's kind of a scary thing anyway, to go to an unknown place. I've been watching a lot of Frozen lately, so all I can hear is into the unknown. So they're going into the unknown. And then, of course, a storm hits, just to make it all that worse. And then they're panicking, which is odd because these disciples were all fishermen. So they, in theory, were really good at sailing. So that's extra scary. So this storm must have been really, really bad, right? And then Jesus is taking a nap. What's up with that? I don't know. Anyway, so that prompts them to say, do you even care about us? We're in a storm. We're going to die here. What are you doing? It seems like he didn't care because he was sleeping, right? And sometimes when you're upset and other people are calm, that can be annoying, right? That happens to me a lot. My husband is always calm. And I'm always worked up. <laughs> And uh, I think it's why we get along. But Jesus isn't upset, so it seems like he doesn't care. But that's not the case at all. He does, for sure, care. He says in a very calm voice, peace, be still. You know, if we get mad or upset, we try to do deep breaths, right? Or count to ten or something like that. We try that with my three-year-old. It doesn't always work. And things always feel a little better after we're calm, when we take a new look at things. And Jesus is the one who is always calm when we're not, right? The disciples in the story today haven't quite figured out yet that Jesus is the Son of God. We're not at that point. And that's okay, too, because everybody figures that out on their own time. So they were scared without any need. But see, we know who Jesus is. And we know that Jesus can calm all the storms that we live through in our lives. Maybe it's illness or family problems or if somebody passes away or you lose a pet. When we have all these stormy times in our lives of fear and doubt and rough waters. Jesus can calm it for us. He's that calm voice in our ear, you know, that always tells us that we can get through it. Jesus never told us that we wouldn't have any problems. That's not true at all. We will. 
But if we trust in him, he'll help us get through those problems and come out on the other side better. He can give us peace in our hearts, even if we're in the middle of a big scary storm. And that's why we're all in this boat with Jesus and each other, so we can get through our lives together and be stronger and happier together. So now we're going to say a prayer, and it's a repeating prayer, so I'll say the line and then you say the line. I'll point at you when it's your turn. <laughs> so you say, Our Father, our Father, we know that each day we will face problems. We know that each day we will face problems. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. That as we sail through life, as we sail through life, you are always there. You are always there. To calm the storms. To calm the storms. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know how it ends. <laughs> Please join me in saying the Nicene Creed, which begins on page 7 of your bulletin. We believe in one God, Father and Holy, maker of heaven and earth. church and for the world. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with our ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and we love one another as he loves us. Lord in your mercy. Bless the oh Lord physicians, nurses, first first responders and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. We pray especially for Dr. Elizabeth Engelman, Dr. Dan Griffin, Dr. Jeff Porowski, Dr. Rachel Simpson, Karen Lee, Eva Longmire, Brenda Marshall, 
Susan Dietz Nightingale, Pat Bates, Marina Hira, and those responding to natural and human made disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Hank, Peter, Bob, Joe, Nina, Shirley, Mark, Cam, MD, Marion, Clay, Kai, Frank, Mark, Michael, Kimberly, Tina, Carol, Sue D, Todd, Debbie, Carol, Larry, Stephanie, Einstein, Lucien, Tony, Father Terrence, Sue B, Joan, Danny M, Father Guy, who's sitting vigil for his mother, those hurt by the recent rash of COVID violence in our nation, and all those affected by COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for the Right Reverend Robert Campbell Butcher, all of those killed nationwide as a result of gun violence, and the millions worldwide who have died from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you entrusted your son Jesus, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph, an earthly father. On this Father's Day, let us bless all fathers and father figures as they care for those they love. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience, support them in the work they have to do, protecting those who look to them, as we look to you for love and salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's not confess our sins against God of our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and we fall out of our dignity. By what we have done, by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we have not been with that. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. And may you be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be all with you. And all the way to you. Peace, everybody. <laughs> well, hello, hello. Today it's Sunday, it's Father's Day, it's a beautiful day. I believe it's pretty humid, but I don't know. I haven't been outside. And <laughs> we are going to uh, bless our graduates. Everyone who's graduating is here. So come on down. Da, 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 da. No? Oh, come on. Yay. Don't worry, I won't embarrass you too much. <laughs> Yay! Well, congratulations, everybody, especially this year. I don't know how you guys did it with this craziness this year. It must have been very hard. So we congratulate you and commend you for all the hard work that got you to graduation. And I have a prayer for you all. So ready? Let us pray. 
God, our Father, today we honor our young people who are graduating this year. As they begin a new adventure, show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world. Help keep them grounded in love of you and of their neighbors, and help give them strength to hold on to their faith in you and keep alive their joy in your creation. We bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Only silver cross from the church to remember us always and remind them to come back. Please, often. <laughs> so we thank you, and I'm going to take a blessing on the cross. Bless this cross as we say goodbye to one of our beloved Christopher's for now. Help it to remind her of her St. Stephen's family and the love we have for her and that God has for her also. Bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here you go. <laughs> we have the little box. <laughs> we'll give you the box in the second. <laughs> and it's also the last day of Sunday school, and so I'm going to embarrass all the Sunday school teachers to come up here now. And Rhonda. <laughs> children with joy and steadfast devotion all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Yay, thank you all again. I have all my little special prayers here. Okay. Now we have our regular announcements. Oh. <laughs> yes, obviously we saw from the bishop that we were lifting some of our restrictions, so yay! So I had a lot of fun pulling up blue tape the other day. It was very, it's like very therapeutic. <laughs> and luckily it didn't damage anything, so I was having a nightmare like I would pull up the X and then there would be an X on the shirt. You? Oh no. No, but it was good. So yeah, you can read those. Um, I know, we're still not allowed to have, like, potluck dinners yet. Soon, soon. <laughs> and, Rapali, do you want to talk about the movie? Check it on there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, come up to the microphone, okay. In case anyone can't hear. Good morning. Oh my goodness, I'm always people. I love it. <laughs> uh, next Sunday, we're having a free viewing of um, Love for Your Die, which is a documentary about the Bishop of Gene Robinson. Um, producers have given us permission to screen this to the community. You can watch it on Zoom. The link is in the bulletin. And also, if you want to come in person, there's an Eventbrite link so you can register in, in person so we can watch it all together. We'll be downstairs in the St. Cecilia room. The Eventbrite, Eventbrite registration is just so we can keep count that they're not, you know, too many people. I think right now I have one person registered, so there's plenty of room. Um, if you don't know uh, Bishop Dean Robinson, he was the first 
um, openly gay uh, bishop consecrated in 2003 in all of Christendom. And it's his journey um, starting from Uganda Palace to uh, the Bishop Convention um, here in 2018. Yeah. Um, you might recognize some other bishops and clergy that are in the documentary. It was funded by the Sundance Film Festival and it was released in 2012. And we're doing this in partnership with Be the Rainbow, who did uh, organize the Pride Parade um, uh, last last week. So keeps you going by. Um, so they will also be in attendance to talk about a little bit about their organization and, uh, and awareness in the community. So I uh, welcome everyone to come. If you can't come, watch it on Zoom. And we're probably going to do it again. So this is not going to be your only opportunity for your next time. You know. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, Bishop Robinson is in the city, so we're going to uh, extend an invitation to have him come in the future. Right. Thank you. Yeah, Bishop Robinson is a very sweet man. I worked with him. I did a summer internship in New Hampshire when I was at seminary, so I got to work with him. Uh, he's a wonderful person. Very graceful under pressure. Uh, I guess it has to be in this situation, but yes. Yeah. So watch the movie. Uh, it's great. And you get to see one of my favorite bishops of all time, Bishop Barbara Harris, who was the first female bishop. And she was my bishop in Massachusetts growing up. She died last year, but she's a wonderful woman and she's really funny. So. <laughs> anyway, I can tell you a lot of stories about the people in the movie, but I'll, I'll save it for after you watch it. Anybody having a birthday or an anniversary? We had a couple at 8 o'clock. Gail, yeah, yeah. birthday? It's your anniversary? And so it's your anniversary? How many years? 59. 59? Wow. Gail, what about you? Wow. And it's your birthday? Cool, I won't ask how many. <laughs> Unless you want to say. <laughs> Okay, well, let's do anniversary first, and then we'll do birthday, okay? So, it's on page eight. For anniversary, people. May God bless you and grant you your love. May he be your love for each other. May he bless you and grant you friends, and lead you to the land and happiness in heaven. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless us all, keep us in love forever and ever. Amen. Yay! I'd like to also make an announcement that our son from uh, North Andover, Massachusetts, is visiting us today with his wife, Martha, oh. um, for both Father's Day and for our anniversary. Welcome! <laughs> I know all the dirt on my hand. Okay, birthday prayer. We're leaving our birthday person out here. Okay. Ready? Watch over those celebrating as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them in the spirit of sorrow. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, make your peace with your last son of the same. Abide the holy days of your lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yes. Thank you. I'll just announce that I have one volunteer already to come and help put all the books back in the pews. The only reason there aren't any books in the pews right now is because there's just a lot of them. There's like hundreds of them. <laughs> Takes a long time, so if anybody wants to help with that, let me know. Or Tori and I can be in here doing it. Um, then maybe we, don't, we can save some paper on our bulletins too if we have the hymns out. But yeah, it just takes a lot of effort to carry all the books around. So, no, it was Elisa and Matt, and I put, put them away. <laughs> That's all. Are you volunteering your dad? Okay. <laughs> Good job. That's why she's on the vestry. She's good at all the people. So let's continue on. Enough of my 
Hubert Gower. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. I am the Lord of 